Hi, my name's Kathy Millett. Last week we looked at edging our wharves and docks. This week we're adding just a few more details. So this is our final week looking at dock pictures and we're still looking at the Library of Congress because it does have good pictures. And this week we're looking at those finer little details, the ropes that might be out there, the um, sort of pallets or boxes or crates, the wood edges, which we've done a bit of, but in some cases there's some plywood boarding. So as you can see here where there's a section that's been damaged, some of those sort of extra little details that are gonna bring our dock to life. So you've watched me tarmac and do loads of stuff on my docks last week and put some edging around them. This week we're on to details. So what kind of details can you add to a dock, birds? I've got some, um, these are first editions HO seagulls, they look quite big. And then I've also got some, um, hmm. um, I've also got some prizer ones. These are a lot smaller. You can see they do look incredibly um, sort of fine, detailed, and they've got seagulls. I'm also gonna add some people. These are, again, Prizer, Prizer Group of Seven, um, Industrial Workers and Dockers. And I've used a couple of them before. I've also got a bag of crates and things, so I'm probably gonna add, you know, a couple of these in, weathered down as if they're waiting to go somewhere. So I'm gonna weather all these. They look a little bit um, bland, boring, and if I'm honest, clean. So this is just, I think these are mostly lifelike. Um, well, they were lifelike um, that I've picked up over the years and you can easily find them around. Like another sheet of foil. And this time I'm gonna use a big brush and a MIG wash just to put some um, um, stuff into here. Now, the only thing I'll say is these lifelike um, palettes come with little, Sprigs at the bottom, which is wonderful for, no doubt, attaching them to something, but just need trimming off if you want to actually um, get them to sit flat on a surface. So I'm gonna use MIG Productions Neutral Wash because I've got tons of this stuff and it's my favorite color. So out of Productions, you can't get it anymore, but Ammo by MIG and AK Interactive both make a series of neutral washes that are very similar and there's some great products out there. So you just need to find a wash that is sort of um, brushes on, goes into the gaps, and it's not too dark. This is not the time really for a dark wash. A dark wash will just make it look too highlighted. And I don't really want it to be a um, particularly overdone thing. I just want there to be a little bit of something on here, bringing out some of the details. So I'm not gonna put a huge amount on. As you can see, it just makes sure it goes into every gap and then do the final top piece. And you might notice I haven't particularly shaken this hard. And that's one thing I don't do. I often don't shake this up to its full strength because I actually want a weaker wash. And I'm gonna do the same thing to my birds. Right, now I need to do my people. Now, these are harder to get to look good in my experience um, because the faces look blank. So even just putting a little bit of um, something onto the faces can help. So the people, I'm gonna use a dark wash. Um, I don't want it to be hugely dark, so I'm gonna shake it just a little. And then I'm just gonna pick this up and hold him by his feet and just, how dark's that? It's probably a bit too dark take some off and just put it in. And what I want it to do is to sit into his eyes, sit into the creases on his clothes, just so that there's a bit of a um, definition in them. Yeah, let's just put him down here to dry. I'll come back and touch the backs up because it's um, enamel, you can just go over it if anything pools in a weird way. Now I've got a number of flying birds. That's perching on something, but this one, its feet are up, and that, to my mind, means that it's flying. So for these three, you can, if you want, put them flying in midair. Now, it can look a little odd, um, and the thing that you use is a really fine wire. I'm gonna use fishing line, um, such as this. So what I'm gonna do is just snip it into some sections, and we can 
cut them down a bit in a minute. So all you need is a little bit of um, um, cyanoacrylic and a little bit of rocket blaster. So all this does is set your cyanoacrylic as soon as it touches it, which can make it much easier to, um, to put, in, you know, put it in place. So I can put an end on here. Actually, what I would normally do is just drip it off the end here. I have spilt so many bottles of this. So if I attach that there and then put a little drop on and you can see my bird is stuck. Excellent. Here we go. Now it'll pick him up, but yeah, if I turn him over, he'll, he'll work on a short one. It won't do a very long one, but that's probably all I need is just that little bit there. And then the final thing I'm going to do is put down some of this veneer as a um, set of just very thin ply. And the reason for that, I've got quite a bit of patching and looking at my photos from the Library of Congress for um, the Connecticut State Pier, you can see that this area here is quite badly damaged and they put some ply down just to stop people falling through. So I've got a variety of them and I'm gonna choose the one with the finest grain. I even know what these are. These are just a wood veneer sheet, 22 by 12 thickness, 0.5 to 0.7 mil, 30 assorted sheets. And what I'm gonna do is take my scale ruler. I'm gonna use the squares on here and I'm gonna cut it to shape. And what size am I gonna do them? Well, four by eight. Now the only thing you have to watch on wood grain like this is sometimes it does like to just take you a little bit off because it's quite a firm grain. So a couple of light passes rather than one thick one. There we go, and that's all I'm gonna use. Um, okay, we've got some there. Northwest Shortline Chopper, wouldn't be without it. So the other thing I'm gonna do is just slice the corners off a little. Now this might seem a bit odd, but if you look at the pictures, I think it's to stop people falling over them. They've sliced the corners off. So I'm just gonna to do that. Now I'm presuming that these have been down for quite a long time. So they're gonna be quite mucky. So what we're gonna do now is an exercise in muckiness. Um, and the first thing we're gonna do is stain them a darker color. And for that, I'm gonna use the good old fashioned, um, just isopropyl alcohol and India ink. I'm gonna use a medium mix, which is two teaspoons of black India ink to a pint of isopropyl alcohol. And I use the 99% because that's what I buy on Amazon. You can use the 75% rubbing alcohol if you prefer, or whatever you get your hands on, um, whatever's easier for you to do. It's worth saying these will warp less with the 99% than they will with the um, sort of 75% because there's no water in there. But I don't think it's gonna make a huge difference because we can squash them later with a brick. Um, when in doubt, you know, that good old brick on top will sort wonders. I'm just going to do this on a piece of foil so that it doesn't go in. There's multiple ways to do this. The easiest way is to get some tweezers and just dunk them. Try not to drop them in. There we go. I'm going to leave a little bit extra on top just to make sure that they stay quite dark. Could have used perhaps a darker mix. Um, maybe I should have, but I want this well soaked through. So they're still looking a little bit new really. So what I'm gonna do is put some pigments on which will really knock them back a bit. And this is MIG Productions again. MIG are out of um, production now. But Ammo from MIG, AK Interactive, they all do really good pigments that you can use. They're all military modeling brands and I'm just gonna sort of put them on. This brush is actually slightly damp, I think. Yep just to try and um, get it in there. I mean, this is just a gray color and I'm just trying to um, get the, this to sit into the gaps and um, just knock it back a bit and give it a bit of a, a different color finish. You know, you can do multiple layers of whatever you fancy on these. If you don't want them to look quite so chalky, then um, we'll get to that in a minute. Now I just want to put some stains on. 
So I've got some MIG dart wash that I just used on the people and I've got a cocktail stick and I'm literally just going to spatter the odd stain on. And I mean odd, I don't want this to be a huge um, thing, but yeah, it just needs a little drip. It's probably a bit big, so you can just put a few little marks on one or two of them. And then you can do the same with the neutral wash. So you get a different set of stains from that. And actually this will give a different stain. And if you stain over the top of the um, um, pigment, you get different colors on that as well. So you can build up some really interesting sort of textures um, just by putting a few little marks on. And then finally, just for a little bit of difference, you could also use isopropyl alcohol if you want, um, which is very just simple. And it will just, um, should just dry off, but it might fix your um, pigments in a different way. It will sort of settle them into the gaps a little. So they'll just look slightly different to what they did with the um, um, stains on here. I'm just going to put a few little splodges on. This won't really show up as much when it's dry. They tend, it tends to almost disappear. So up in the loft, time to put the details on. And I've got some tacky glue for those details that are wood based. And I've got cyanoacrylic um, CA glue, super glue for those that are not like metal or actually where I'm going to do the flying birds. So first up actually, let's do the birds. So I've got various birds and I'm going to put a pile on here. I think that's going to be a bit of a a uh, seagull. And I find these three quite big, so I'm not entirely sure what I'm going to do with them. So I'm just going to leave them on one side for now, because they are a lot bigger than the rest of them. But on this little bit here, which is further away, I guess, I'm going to put um, a couple of these. I've got one just coming in to land. So a really small, if that's possible with this, splodge of glue. And actually, I think this is going to need tweezers. So I'm going to put him just there. Okay, he's going to stand up on his own. A little bit of super glue. And then, excellent, finally. Um, this one looks like it's walking. So we might have this one, just for a bit of variety, set on this bollard. And now I've got a couple I'm going to put landing here. So I've got these and I want them just up in the air a bit. So I'm going to snip this, a little bit of super glue, got quite a lot of super glue at the bottom. It blobs onto something. There he goes. Out there. There we go. So from certain angles, he just looks like he's coming into land. And then we've got another one. I'm going to do the same. Now with the magic of Photoshop, I will make sure that those um, little bits of fishing line disappear in any photo that I take. Um, but you know, when you're looking at it on the line, you will see them. So next up, I just need to add my boxes and crates. Now I'm not going to glue these down because A, they're quite heavy and they don't need gluing. B, I'm going to rearrange them because I am going to put this building here, this is the front of, I'm going to put that building in place and eventually and these will line up across the edge then. So, I mean, you can just arrange things like this as you fancy them. I mean, it's not, a, not exactly difficult. Um, they're great little props to move around. Um, so these are the lifelike ones. I gotta say, I do love them. You now you can just imagine that there's a, a building coming along here and these are all just lined up slightly more neatly across the edge. Here's a couple of more things. There we go. So, you know, they're easy enough to put on and have. So the next detail are my little bits of wooden four by eight, apply sheeting to, to go over the cracky bits really or the bits that have deteriorated so badly that there's a danger to the pier. So I've decided I'm going to put those near one of the areas that's quite badly cracked um, but I'm not going to do it over my crack section because you know obviously that looks all right I'm going to do it on one of the plain bits next to it. This section here is quite badly cracked and I'm thinking that this is going to go along here um, and they're quite simple you can see and I'm just going to tack them down with a little bit of white glue. This is just my tacky glue. So just a little dot in the middle of the back. And we're gonna just put a little section along here. So if 
final thing is my people. Now, normally with people, I put them on with just a small spot of white glue and try and put them somewhere level where they'll stand because I don't really want them to um, get, well, too solid. I'd rather they fell over than they broke their feet off by having too strong a glue if they get knocked. Um, so I've got four people here and they all look like they're striding off to do something exciting down the dock. Now I thought about it and actually I think I'm going to have them over by the yard office because I just think I'll get a little bit more people around that section at this point. a couple more details you can easily add that don't really need much more than a bit of thread. Now I've got some cotton thread, it's um, fine cotton thread, it's not stuff you sew with necessarily, it's a bit thicker. I've had it for years, I bought it to do the fenders, actually I bought a thinner one which is even better and I put that somewhere incredibly safe and I can't find it. So this is the next size up which is white, it's a little bit white, so I think we'll just put it in place and then put some MIG Neutral Wash or any brown stain, acrylic paint, whatever, over it just to tie it back down a bit. Okay, so I'm just going to cut a loop. I've got a bit of a, a worn end here. And then on this end I'm going to do quite clean, so I'm a nice a little old. And then I need to cut it into a hawser um, end, you know, just one of these um, sort of loops that will, that will go over. You want it quite loose because it's got to fit over here, and they were loose. And you can... Um, stain it with neutral. Now I don't recommend you do it in this order but this just happens to be the order I'm doing it for the video. I would normally stain it, let it dry and then glue it but I'm getting impatient, it's getting hot up my loft. There we go. So I've got it stained. Just let it drip for a minute. And there we go. And what I'm going to do is just use a little bit of, I think in this instance, super glue. So that's my and I'm going to put that there. I'm going to get a little bit of... Oh, this is incredibly manky now, isn't it? And the only reason I'm using super glue is because it's quicker. And this is an enamel. And I'm going to just roll it a little. There we go. And then you can just loop it over. And you've got a little bit of hanging. You need to just make sure it's taut. So... Um, can actually just hang it down taut. There we go. So you can tie bits of rope on anywhere, little shredded bits, just little bits. If you look at any pictures of rocks, there's often little lines hanging around. People have put them up and they've attached things to them. They're not necessarily just broken, they could be there for a reason. They want to um, attach a few things to them. Perhaps it's lower down for dinghies to tie up to because they can't reach the top or something. All sorts of reasons for there to be ropes hanging around. Um, but there's not gonna be a huge number. It's not like on every bollard. It's just a one or twice. Um, just to give something a little bit of interest. My dad used to be in the Merchant Navy and he says if you go to a lot of ports there's an awful lot of paint splattered over the docks because people take the opportunity to paint the boats when they're in, especially if they've come a long way across the um, um, ocean. They've arrived so they take the opportunity when they've got a few days shore whilst they're unloading or loading to paint things. Now you can do that in other sort of docks, you know, ones which are smaller perhaps, you might get people painting their names of boats on the side, you might get numbers, you might get graffiti, but it is true that you will see quite a bit of paint on edges. So I want to do just something in white to demonstrate this, and I'm going to use, for white paint, a Woodland Scenics road striping pen, because I bought it for the road and I've not striped that much. It's very simple to use, you store them up, well, you store them with the working end down, and you can literally just use it as a pen. So. Um, this one's been upside down for a while, so it's not... Give it a little bit of a... And you just press down like this to get the um, paint going again. I'm going to put just some sort of like it was writing. Someone scrawled their name on. So you can just see it adds a little bit of extra texture. So there we go. There's a number of different details you can put on your docks.
Well, that's enough of the video shops. I really do like these birds. And some of them I've left the supports on and you can see them in others I've taken them out in Photoshop magic and they look amazing. You, you really cannot tell what's holding them in the air and that is the magic of Photoshop. But actually I do like them. I think they just add a bit of life. And I've got to say, I know that a lot of people don't like having people in their layouts, but again, they add direction and movement to what is otherwise a fairly static scene. There's not a lot going on, but these guys are striding off somewhere. The crates need a little bit more context and the building will add that when I do it. But in the meanwhile, they're there to show that it's a working port. The plywood sheets are down to show you the patching area. And you know, they look good. There's a bit of white paint splashed around. Maybe not as much, I might go back and put a bit more on. And I do like the trailing bit of rope. It was looking a bit unprototypically bouncy, so I did glue it down a bit with some white glue. And a few more overhead shots. I've got to say, these are my final shots of my dock. So I've put in a few just of my scale house, which is now in position. Um, at the far end, my paint had a weird effect. I put on some satin varnish and I sprayed some water to try and feather it. And it went really white. And I was saying to Maddo, oh, I'm going to have to do something like that. And he went, oh, you get a lot of salt on the docks. It's just weeping out. It looks fine. So I've left that in place and just lived with it. And it's grown on me, I have to admit. in the cold and hot and go back to the kitchen for a bit for a bit of comfort oh well whew. feels so much better now 